It's a time for moving fast, an age of speed. Let's get there, let's get there, let's get there fast. We're all in a hurry. We've got someplace to go, something big to do. Like the steelmakers of Weirton, West Virginia, where they're making steel slabs 10 times faster than they've ever been made before by a process called continuous casting. A slab of steel is a very useful steel product. 26 feet long, nine inches thick, and loaded with potential. You can start a slab on its way to become an automobile. It's a time for moving fast, an age of speed. Let's get there, let's get there, let's get there fast. We're all in a hurry. We've got someplace to go, something big to do. Like the steelmakers of Weirton, West Virginia, where they're making steel slabs 10 times faster than they've ever been made before by a process called continuous casting. A slab of steel is a very useful steel product. 26 feet long, nine inches thick, and loaded with potential. You can start a slab on its way to become an automobile, a refrigerator, or after becoming strip steel like Nationals galvanized, weir chrome, or tin plate, containers by the billions, and products of all kinds. Slabs are the beginning of almost every form of National Steel products. So National Steel, at its Weirton Steel division, with its great team of Weirton steelmakers, decided to be among the first to modernize the production of slabs. The old method of making slabs, the slow method, was to use a lot of major equipment, like blast furnaces, open hearths, ingot molds, ingot storage yards, soaking pits to reheat ingots, and huge rolling mills to squeeze the ingot into a slab. That took a lot of time. But suppose you could eliminate all of this except the blast furnace and substitute the basic oxygen furnace, add a vacuum degasser, and a revolutionary forward step called a continuous slab caster, and make the slabs in one-tenth the time. That's high-speed steel. High-speed steel starts, like most steel, at the blast furnace, where molten iron is made from iron ore. But the first big step in making non-stop steel slabs is the basic oxygen furnace. In 45 minutes, this furnace can produce 330 tons of high-quality steel. Almost a third of that charge more than 100 tons, starts as scrap steel. The rest is molten iron, direct from the blast furnace. A 70-foot lance will be brought close to the surface of the iron to jet pure oxygen into the mixture to raise its temperature to almost 3,000 degrees. Burn off carbon, 
oxidize other elements, change iron into steel. Oxygen screams from the lamps at 1,600 miles an hour. Mach 2, 24,000 cubic feet a minute. The blow lasts less than 25 minutes. It accomplishes what takes eight hours in an open heart. Now the temperature is taken as Weirton Steelmen stand behind a heat barrier and look into the open face of 2950 degree heat. Samples are taken and rushed to the chemical laboratory. Complete analysis takes only four minutes. Carbon, way under 1%. Silicon, less than 100. Manganese, phosphorus, sulfur, chromium, tin, nickel, copper, all measured to within hundreds and even thousands of 1%. And then the tap. High-speed steel pours from basic oxygen furnaces at Wharton 24 hours a day. A second furnace stands always ready to keep the flow of steel coming. More than 30 heats and 10,000 tons of steel a day. Temperature is checked immediately. In continuous casting, temperature must be controlled with watchmaker accuracy. Within minutes, the steel will be arriving at the mill's modern vacuum degasser, an important step in the national steel technique of continuous casting of slabs. Degassing removes oxygen from molten steel. Because it does, it's better steel. In vacuum degassing, the ladle of steel, which has just been poured from the furnace, is moved under two snorkel tubes. The snorkels are lowered into the steel below the slag level, and a near-perfect vacuum is drawn in the upper chamber. Argon gas is added to the steel in one leg. This forces the steel in that leg to move upward, starting a cycle which gradually draws all the steel through that snorkel into the vacuum chamber. As steel is exposed to the deep vacuum, its carbon and oxygen combine into a gas that's drawn off. Then the degassed steel flows down the other snorkel, back into the ladle. During the degassing, slag is thrown on top of the steel to continue the close control of temperature. Degassing time varies. The steel is exposed to the vacuum two or three times.
330 tons of higher quality steel are moving again. Still close to 2,900 degrees. Moving to become part of a revolution in steel making to the continuous slab caster. From this platform, the steel, now less than 30 minutes from the furnace, will be transformed directly and immediately into slabs. There'll be no ingots, no reheat in soaking pits, no 25,000 horsepower rolling mills, no time lost. The elements of National's continuous slab caster are the ladle of steel, two ton dishes, four molds, and four slab chutes. Steel pours from the ladle into regulating cold ton dishes and then flows down into the molds, which are made of copper and designed to cool the steel rapidly. The molds oscillate up and down three-eighths of an inch, and heat is drawn off by water cooling within the mold and by high-volume water sprays below it. Here's where continuous slab casting becomes as precise as a micrometer. Molten steel must stay in that mold long enough to form a safe, self-supporting skin. But it must emerge promptly, so the water sprays can solidify it before it reaches the pinch rolls less than 40 feet away. At National Steel, this means a speed of about three feet a minute. In each of the four molds, 12 feet of slab a minute. It takes just about an hour to convert 330 tons of furnace hot steel into high quality slabs. The old ingot and rolling mill method takes at least 12 hours. The steel men of Weirton still enjoy a sense of excitement with each pour. They know that they are pioneers in perfecting this technique. And they know that some experts said it couldn't be done on a production basis. Well, they're doing it. As steel flows from control nozzles in the bottom of the two tundishes and down through snorkel tubes into the four molds, hooded operators carefully maintain a slag covering. It's used to sustain the precise metallurgical and temperature control which continuous casting requires. A few feet below them, four long slabs already are being formed, moving red hot and still molten inside down from the molds. The slabs move out in two directions from the mold area toward four identical slab cutting and shipping areas. They are pulled downward at precisely controlled speeds by a massive chain called a leader. At the bottom of the chute, the chain rides up a ramp and is detached from a dummy bar on the front of the slab. As the lead edge of the slabs appear, steelmen 30 feet above, are still using their levers to control the flow of molten steel. Molten steel at one end of the process, solid steel at the other. Still red hot, but solid to the core, the slab is leveled as it leaves the chute. The dummy bar is knocked off. The leading edge is burned off almost the only scrap generated by the entire process. And the long slab is torch cut into 22 to 26 foot lengths. To the end of the line, the process 
is nonstop. The slabs, which roll out onto the cooling tables, are so free of surface flaws that usually little more than a small amount of hand scarfing is required to prepare them for rolling into national steel quality products. Hot and cold rolled and coated sheets. Two hours ago, these slabs were scrap steel and molten pig iron. In any other process, they would still be molten steel. But this is high-speed steel, already moving toward the hot strip mill. It's an age of speed, a time for moving fast. Moving fast, that's national steel your kind of steel company.